Anyway guys, thanks for stopping by. Now look, what we're looking at in this video is going to be the programming of the, the radio you see in front of you, the scanner you see there. Now, that's a GRE PSR 500, uh, I believe to be the same as the Radio Shack uh, 106 Pro or Pro 106. Now, keep in mind that I, a uh, bit of a disclaimer, keep in mind that I've only had the radio for about less than 24 hours and, and only been fiddling with the Win 500 program for about the same time, obviously a little bit less. What I want to talk to you about is, is programming uh, talk systems and, and, and how I've gone about it uh, in my way and, and programming it through the Win 500 program. Uh, you can actually see that the, the scanner's picking up some talk groups here. This is the frequency that, that it's using here and you'll see it'll flash up. There's our talk system which is the New South Wales GRN Hunter area and it's saying it's come from the Merry War area there. As it flashes up, and we'll see here, it's actually showing us that the ID that's coming through at the moment is 23220. Okay, now it jumped over to 20026. Have a quick listen. Okay, now that one's pretty obvious. It's coming up at the same fire comp, so we know there's going to be fire. Uh, fire services or something along those lines <laughs> but sometimes what I was doing initially was just you know setting up a wild card and we'll explain that a little bit later in the video <clears throat> so literally everything comes through and then trying to frantically write down those different talk IDs or the radio IDs that were popping up on the thing trying to hit pause trying to monitor it trying to get an idea of who was talking or what they were talking about so then I could go over to the program and actually program it so rather than just having the talk ID coming up like it's showing there 10301 so it actually come up and give me an idea of what it was so I could put in ambulance fire police whatever uh, that got a bit of a hassle uh, and I will actually show you how I've been doing it and maybe uh, certainly open the comments up below for any advice on on a better way to do it I've got access to the radio reference website and I've been using that but again, coming from Australia, there's not as much information as there is for the states. And I wanted to be a bit selective about what I was going to input into the radio stuff as well. I only wanted kind of the local stuff and things that I was interested in. So I didn't want to just download everything from the radio reference website and slap it into the radio. So I'm going to show you what I've been doing, how I've been setting up. I'll show you how to in, uh, program a, a basic talk system and, and some talk groups just to get you going. I mean, literally, it'll take you five minutes to use a radio reference website to jump on, find your, your local broadcasting towers, wherever that's being broadcast from, that's easy enough to locate, how to program that talk group, sorry, that talk system, and you'll see this, that LED is coming up there yellow, and we'll show you how to do that as well, how to program that talk system, how to program a wild card for a talk group, and then how to identify those talk group IDs so you can go in and put them in, like you can see them there coming up ambulance and, and uh, fire etc. So let's pop over to the computer, we're going to leave that turned down and you'll see over here I've actually got the uh, USB cable plugged in here for programming. We'll turn that off and uh, we'll see you over at the computer. So now we're on the computer, quickly, what you've actually got is I'm on the talk systems uh, object, uh, talk system objects tab, just looks called talk systems tab, anyway and here's the ones that I've pre-programmed you're going to work pretty closely with the radio reference website unless you've got some other resources, web resources or whatever it may be that are going to actually give you the frequencies etc that these talk systems operate on. And let's just jump over, I'm going to go to, let me just find it, here we go, here's our radio reference website, you can see that there. You can pick your, your country, your state, your area, your region, whatever it might be. And just as an example, we're going to use this one here, which is, just let me find it again, I want to seem to lose it. Here we go, this one here at uh, Port Stephens down the back. That's in the Hunter region, which is me. Thought that uh, I'd have a fair chance of, of picking up any broadcast from that. Over on the right hand side, you're going to see all the list of frequencies that that, uh, that tower uses, or that talk system uses. The majority of them are going to be just your, your regular, regular coloured, uh, you know, black or grey. 
And you're going to see a couple there that are going to be highlighted or are red text or blue text. They're really only the ones we're, they're really the only ones we're interested in because the radio is going to handle all the rest. This one is basically your control fre frequency in red. Some of them will have uh, multiple red ones, uh, multiple blue ones, combination of both, whatever. Ultimately, again, we're only interested in in the ones that are in color. Now, if we actually click on the talk group here, sorry, the talk system here. Not all of these have as much information, but this one has a good wealth of information listed about it. It'll tell you what it is, what network it's operating on, where it is, etc., etc. Uh, and you actually see over on the right-hand side here what sort of area of coverage that that tower has got. Now, I'm in the Newcastle area just here, just on the boundary, and I'm actually picking this one up okay. More interesting, though, and the information that you're actually going to need Again, are these frequencies that are duplicated from that page we were just on. Now, using that information, and again, those only two, you can go ahead and, and program all these in, but you don't need to, because with this control channel, it's going to digitally broadcast information in addition to the voice, and that's going to do the control, and it's going to instruct your radio which frequency they're using and which frequency to go to. So, grab those uh, frequencies, move over to your Win 500, and we're going to go to the Port Stevens one here. All right. Again, the same as programming your conventional channels. What you're going to do is click on the, the tabs across the top here, or the header. Go up to Edit and go New Item. Or alternatively, use the keyboard shortcut, Control, Shift, and the letter N on the keyboard. And you'll get a new item that will be inserted down the bottom. I'm not going to do that because we can, uh, can show you how to do it just with this one here. Once you've done that, you just click on here. Uh, you can edit the name. So it doesn't have to be a name that matches what they've got on Radio Reference. It can be anything that means something to you. Uh, I tend to stick with the stuff that's on Radio Reference for the purpose of programming for, for future reference in that later on, I want to know which ones I've already got programmed uh, and if I want to go and insert some more stuff from Radio Reference. If I didn't have the stuff from similar to the names are on radio reference uh, I may not be able to identify which ones I've got programmed in and, and which ones haven't yet been programmed from radio reference so I've got them fairly similar so do that and then uh, once you've got in whatever name you want it to show up on the radio as and, and some way some sort of identifier for yourself move over here and type uh, now this is what we're going to decode and we're going to put it on P25 auto can put on P25 manual, but uh, I don't know what the difference is there. Everybody seems to go P25 auto, and it has worked for me. You've got a number number of other options over here on the right. Whether you want it to uh, attenuate the signal, if it's a local one, you may need to switch your attenuator on, which uh, cuts it back a little bit. That's the lockout, so that won't be scanned. Uh, AGC is basically uh, automatic gain control, which if uh, I haven't switched it on, uh, or the orbit that it tends to switch on automatically. Uh, the AGC basically is if you've got a lot of mobile cars or something like that and their signal is wavering up and down, that'll balance those out. Uh, SuperTrack is, I believe, uh, helps you be a bit more accurate as far as scanning uh, and getting the exact frequency, but I, I think that may be more use for, for you know, VFO scanning or something like that. Uh, narrow FM, etc. we could put that on, uh, or Boost, which will bump up the audio if you've got a low audio uh, frequency and it's, it's it's a bit quiet and you want to pop it up. Um, now, okay, so we've done all that. Literally, all we've typed, gone in here is typed in Port Stevens. We've gone P25 auto because we know it's a digital frequency. Go over to the right hand side here and just go system frequencies, and you can input all your frequencies here. Now, if you want to, you can go and program all of those frequencies that you saw listed. But you only have to program in those ones that are showing as control channel and the backup control channel, which is your red and blue. And you'll see we've done that there. We've input those two frequencies. We've gone OK. Now that is literally all you need to do for inserting a torque system. Uh, it's going to sit there, it's programmed, you've got all the frequencies programmed in. But to actually listen to a talk system, you need to program in a talk group or some radio IDs or group IDs. Now what group IDs are is 
say for example the police they when they broadcast their radios will broadcast a specific id now because we're listening to the grn anybody list anybody that's broadcasting using those frequencies using that 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 grn is going to come through to us uh and how you identify what you want to listen to is you can go and search for what those different talk groups are uh, and you'll, you'll be able to find out what the police are what the emergency service are and so on and so on everybody that uses the, the GRN and basically tell the system what talk groups that you want it to broadcast or play through to you or that you want to listen to anything else will be ignored now because we don't or because i don't i'm kind of new to this this uh, game i don't know what all those different talk groups are or more specifically i can go and look them up and input them manually but i don't know what i want to listen to i know i'm interested in you know the fire ambulance and and, and police predominantly police but uh, you know i don't know what all of those talk groups are and i can go and get them but something else might come through that i might listen to and go you know what? yeah i want to put that in as well so the simplest way, unless you know what those are and you want to go and input all those, is to go through and go down to the bottom here where you go talk groups and insert one. Now we'll just delete this one that we've got here. There we go. And we'll insert one. Now to insert a new talk group, now keep in mind that you're going to need a talk group to listen to a talk system. You need to have a talk group associated to a talk system for it to work. Go down here, click on the header down the bottom. Now it doesn't highlight anything, it doesn't do anything, just click on it. Go to edit and go new item, or in my case, control shift and N, and there we go. Now by default, it is going to insert, insert your talk group on me, a new talk group. It's just gonna call it talk group, it doesn't know what you wanna call it. And over here, there's a thing we're interested in. See where it says group or radio ID, and it says wildcard. Perhaps you already know what wildcard is, but it, you know, basically the standard definition in that it will broadcast anything and everything that uh, comes up on that talk system. And that was the way I started. So what I did, I, I went through and I picked up all of the local talk systems, got all those couple of control frequencies, and inserted those. And under each one of those, I went and inserted a new talk group, the default one, and left it as wildcard. So I knew that any time that talk group, uh, sorry, any time that talk system comes up, I was going to get anything and everything that was going to be broadcast on it. What I then did uh, was go over here, and I want to have this uh, on scan list too, because that's where I've got all my talk groups programmed in the GRN. So again, same as your conventional stuff. Go to the right hand side here. I don't want it on 20, which is set up as my default list, so anytime I install, uh, program a new frequency or an object, it's always going to add it to the, the 20. I want to put it on number 2, with all the rest. And there you go, you'll see it's now on uh, scan list 2. And thus far, because it's, it's new, I haven't had any hits on this one. And we'll go up and we'll save that. And there we go. Alright, so basically, that talk system and talk groups uh, have been set up as wildcards. So anything that comes through on that talk system, uh, the, the New South Wales GRN from Port Stephens, is going to be broadcast on our radio. You go and upload that and just start scanning. Now, what I've found useful was, rather than going to radio reference uh, or local resources that i found and trying to watch the radio go and pick up just those talk IDs uh, like we did originally in the original video and we'll just swing back over to the radio now here's one that was already pre-programmed let's just wait for one that comes up with an ID that hasn't been programmed 